Welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about nested workflows within Opalis. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a field management TSP specializing in Opalis. One of the coolest things you can actually do with Opalis is uh, create workflows that trigger other workflows, all the while passing data to and from uh, and between those workflows themselves. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you uh, how to create a workflow that will not only trigger workflow passing data through, but also uh, returning that data back to the master workflow. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a policy here. Rename it. This will be the master workflow. And then while we're here, I'll go ahead and create a, uh, another workflow. We'll name it the sub workflow. Now that we have our two workflows that we're going to be working with, uh, my best practice is to actually start with the sub workflow and then work in the other objects of the master workflow. But as always, we need a scenario. So uh, the master workflow is going to pass in data from a custom start, let's say, to this sub workflow. The sub workflow is actually going to do something with that data, produce results, and then bring those results back up to the master workflow where it will uh, send an email or send a pop up or something like that. So let's just build out an example of workflow that can actually do some work. So, uh, what I usually like to show here is the run program object. And of course, because we're in a sub workflow that's going to be uh, have data passed into it, we need a very important custom start object. So we can connect those two up. And let's just investigate what kind of parameters we might need to pass data with. So I'm going to do a command execution. So we'll need computer, command, and working folder. So that'll be easy enough. So let's go ahead and create those parameters now. So they were computer, command, and working direct. All right, cool. Now that we have them, we can actually reference them in the run program object as published data. So let's go back here, command execution, right click, subscribe, publish data, computer. Same thing for the command, and then same thing for the working folder or working directory. So this object is basically filled out. Um, and because I actually named directory to as directories instead of folder, that's an easy fix because everything's referenced by GUID. I can just go back here, change this from working directory to working folder, and then it, as we see, we open this run program back up. It's working folder, working folder. Just not to confuse anyone who might come back and um, look at these policies later. The other thing I like to do is make sure my custom start object are named appropriately. So I'm going to just say initiate sub workflow. Alrighty. Now we need to actually be able to pass these results into um, the master workflow. So that takes another special object, and that's in the workflow control. Publish, publish policy data. Drag that out. Connect it up. And if you've ever tried to use this before, uh, we open it up, it's empty. So th that might be confusing, but it's easy enough to uh, resolve. This object depends on um, data at the policy level. So let's go up to the policy, right click, properties, and go down to policy data. You can see there's no fields in here. These fields that we add will be re represented in that published policy data object. So let's go ahead and add just uh, pure output. And we could say, give it a description, uh, output from the sub workflow. And now we have a field to pass the data with. Go ahead and hit finish. Now if we open up publish policy data, we can see pure output. And now we can use publish data from the previous object. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Subscribe, publish data. And then because the run program object is what we're demonstrating, we're going to use pure output. And hit finish. So the sub workflow is all but done. So we're going to go ahead and check that in so it'll be able to be referenced when we actually create the master workflow. Let's go back to the master workflow. Now because we're going to be passing data into this workflow as well, we're going to need one of those handy dandy custom start objects. And we could just ca call it initiate master workflow. And then we're going to need some parameters. So 
add those same three parameters. Computer, command, and working folder. All right. Now, because we're going to pass this directly from the uh, custom start into a trigger policy object, we'll go ahead and drag that trigger policy object over, connect it up, open the trigger policy object, and then we're going to navigate to that policy. So we're going to be eight minute demos, nested workflow, sub workflow, and you can see we have command computer working folder. So we're going to go ahead and pass the publish data in, subscribe, publish data, command, same thing for computer. You'll notice these aren't always in the same order. They're um, they're probably sorted by GUID, which is not alphabetical based on the name. So um, just keep that in mind. And we would normally be done, but because we want to wait for the data to come back, we actually have to wait for the completion of that sub workflow. So we this is very important. We have to click wait for completion so that the data that we're triggering to get in that sub workflow will be returned. Otherwise it's fire and forget and the data won't be returned. So I'm going to just call this trigger. And we're done there. Now for the ease of um, viewing this, I'm just going to send a pop up with that information. I'm just going to do localhost. Then we're just going to pass the peer output from sub workflow. Just put it on a separate line. Subscribe, publish data, and you can see this trigger sub workflow object now has that peer output field that we created in the sub workflow. If you hadn't created that field, this field would not be available here. You can see there's the description we chose too. And now we can hit finish. And we're all but done with the master workflow. Let's go ahead and check that in. And that's uh, actually we can initiate this from the operator console. So I'll open up the operator console. All right, now that the operator console is open, let's go ahead and uh, log in. And once we're in, we'll navigate to the workflow that we want to demonstrate. We can see here that we have nested workflows and then there's the two master and sub. Now the good thing about creating master and sub workflows is that if I wanted to I could just go ahead and uh, perform the actions right here as ad hoc as opposed to triggering them from a previous workflow. But because we're talking about nested workflows we're going to uh, trigger it from the master workflow policy. So let's start this workflow. Command let's do a dir on the C drive of this computer. So Opalis Demo VM. Hit start and then when a matter of moments this will get uh, put into queue and then run and then before we know it here's the information from the C drive that's been popped up and you could tell the data came from the trigger sub workflow and then sent to the pop-up because the actual command that was executed was performed in the sub workflow. And just to show you there's nothing up my sleeve. I'll show you that if we do CD dir, you can see that the uh, output is the same. So that's a very quick run through on how to create nested workflows um, where you can pass information in and uh, get information out of sub workflows. So you can imagine nesting a couple of these, waiting for information and having that information come back. Um, very useful for long running processes. And uh, the, the key really is to create the sub workflow first with all the things that you want. Make sure you're publishing the data that you want back through the policy itself and then reference that field that you created or fields that you created in that sub workflow and then do whatever you want with it. And it's very crucial to remember if you want the information to return from the sub workflow make sure you have wait for completion on. So that should be it. Uh, good luck building your nested workflows. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.